Hey guys, answering some more Instagram questions. I'm just coming out of breakfast, so I figure I answer some questions while I, uh, while I wait for somebody. Hey Stefan, thanks for the great advices and keep up the vlog. Quick question, what is your opinion about Flutter plus Firebase for mobile freelancing? Is Firebase worth it or should I build my own backend in the future? Let me start off by answering his last question, should I build my own backend in the future? Short answer is no, 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 no. Do not build your own back end. The top three rules of programming. The top three rules, here it is. The top three rules of programming. Number one, reuse other people's code. Number two, reuse other people's code. Number three, reuse other people's code. You never want to rebuild something that's already out there. Building your own back end is not something I would do in 2019, 2020, uh, because um, building a backend infrastructure from scratch is a huge amount of work. When you can leverage the work of hundreds, if not thousands of other developers who've refined their a backend that's accessible to you, don't build your own backend. Unless you have some very specialized application that the current backends don't support, which I would be very, very surprised if that existed today. Back in the early 90s, it made sense to build your own frameworks, to build your own backends to a certain extent. I did build my own MVC framework for my Java work because I didn't like the MVC frameworks at the time. But uh, between 1996 and 97, 98, 99 to today, there's a huge difference in terms of the quality and the availability of libraries and frameworks. So no, I would not build my own backend. No question about that. Use what's out there. So should you use Flutter and Firebase for mobile freelancing? If there's a demand, if there's demand. So again, you wanna get into any freelancing, you first you learn your foundations, your fundamentals of coding. I recommend the web stack, maybe throw in some Python, why? because it's that's where most of the action is these days and once you learn that set of technologies which you can learn pretty quickly then you could branch into any specialization you can go to flutter you can go into web mobile you can go pwa you can go into c sharp uh, unity gaming it doesn't matter yeah i would learn your foundations then start looking around at the freelance job opportunities that are available in your area see what they're looking for. They may be looking for Flutter. I don't know. They may be working, looking for PWA. I don't know. They may be working for native iOS. Who knows? So that's the first thing you do. You got to look at the job market and that goes to becoming a uh, language and technology neutral in terms of your implementations. Yes, you may prefer one language over another, a type of programming over another, which is, which is fine. But I'll just tell you a quick story. When I was in my last few years of my freelancing career, I would uh, go in, see the client, see what the job was, and then based on the project, based on the needs of the project, I would then choose a technology. Sometimes it would be a stack that I was aware of, and sometimes I would choose some technology I never worked with before because it was just better suited for that job. I was able to make those decisions because I had experience and be I had the fundamentals under my belt. I could, I could easily assess different technologies. So I don't actively code anymore. I manage my, my developers and I, I, I peek in once in a while into architecture. I just don't have the time. But still, to this day, the fundamentals hold true. Frameworks and languages and uh, libraries will come and go, but the fundamentals are pretty solid very solid in fact it's not the 90s anymore so you're pretty safe so yeah learn, learn your fundamentals look at the job requirement look at the the opportunities in the market rather for freelancers i guess you want to do mobile then you chose that way um i had a good friend of mine who loved delphi delphi was the best ever delphi is the best but nobody wanted to hire delphi programmers where we were at the time so you may think Flutter is the best, but make sure there's jobs, right? Make sure there's jobs. And just be open to doing different things. So there you go. Yeah, so Firebase looks like a nice uh, nice back end for you. Don't, re 
rebuild the, the, the wheel, don't re-engineer the wheel, don't reinvent the wheel, there we go. And um, yeah, Flutter's cool, I like Flutter. I haven't used it, I looked at it, I said this is a cool tech, they're doing some good stuff with it. It's probably suited for certain types of projects and may not be so good at other types of projects that you can research. You can find the answers pretty quickly and then you can take it from there. But uh, especially when you're beginning as a freelancer, you got to be more flexible in terms of where you go. Uh, don't be pig-headed about, I'm a Flutter programmer, or I'm a Java programmer, or I'm a PHP programmer, or I'm not a Ruby programmer. That kind of thing. You got to be open to different ideas and just, you know, code around. I, don't know, I hope that helps. So yeah, don't rebuild. I think the one thing to take away, Flutter is great. It looks really good, and for sure. Don't rebuild your own framework. If Firebase is mature, well-regarded, and if it suits your needs, then use it because, trust me, it's going to be a lot cheaper, a lot easier, a lot less headaches using Firebase and trying to come up with your own framework from scratch. That would be, uh, no, don't do that. All right, I hope that helps. Bye-bye. Thank you.